Well, good morning everyone, uh, welcome back to the channel. I hope you are doing okay. It's a very nice day here today. I don't know what it's like for you guys. Um, what I've got for you today is a Hunter stove. I think it's a, quite a large one, Hunter 14 or something. Um, this one's ready for just a little bit of maintenance. We have um, some bricks to replace inside, um, some door seals. Or glass seals to sort out because he's a bit raggy and not in a good shape so we're going to do those give the glasses a clean and then there's also a heat shield to make um to protect a wooden beam from potential heat from the flue pipe it probably would be okay but we're going to do it anyway quite close well it's within the regulation distance so we're going to make it meet the regs is what we're going to do it's been like this for a while so it's you know not a huge problem but let's bring it up to the regs shall we and it's a six inch flue pipe on this so the regulation state it should be 18 inches away which it isn't so we're going to put a heat shield on it to protect it from the heat okay so i'm just going to um go grab the parts out of the van hopefully they're the right ones uh, i haven't checked them and then we'll get these parts out new parts in and then we'll move on to the heat shield so give me a second i'll go and get the box here we go, I'm back. Um, there's a lot of rainwater got in here. Well, I say a lot, a bit. The bottom is wet and rusty. Not nice. Now, I've been here before to see what parts it needed, but I can't remember if I swept the chimney or not. So, we'll get the bits out and I'll have a look. bricks there and some back bricks I think I'll put them there for now and I'm gonna use the box to put the old parts in How crumbly they are. Is this one is here. Not really. Thank <laughs> you. 
These ones are well stuck in. But not for long. Oh. A lot of corrosion behind these. So this one's uh, like a steel plate with vermiculite bricks in and they've become broken and that one keeps falling out and there's bits missing so we're going to swap that. They've changed the design of this so I've been told to just a standard flat piece of steel really. See, okay. <clears throat> that gym is clean. That's good. I must have swept it. <clears throat> this has got clear liners in all the way. You can see straight up. cleaning those air rolls out. We've talked about these air rolls before, these need to be open and often they're not. They get corroded up full of soot and ash and rust. There's not rust on this one. So 
those around the bolts. Now these side bricks, I don't know if you noticed, were difficult to get out. And the back, I forget the name of that, but this back piece here that the bars sit on. Bolted in, and those bolts are really rusty. So I'm reluctant to try and move, remove them, because they'll snap. So hopefully we can get the side bricks in without really much hassle, but we'll soon find out. Right, I'm going to pop to the van, grab the hoover, and then uh, get all this cleaned up, try the new bricks in, and uh, then we can move on to the next job. Right, just let me, give me a moment. Okay, I am back with the vacuum. I think I can make that brighter somehow. Let's have a look. No, that's not it. Ah. How was that? I'll break out another light as well. <clears throat> there we go. How was that? Yeah. Piece of brick from yesterday, I think. Is it gone? Really? Come on in. That bit of brick was from yesterday. I swept the chimney for a chap and um, a really old house. The fire hadn't been used for a long time and as well as smoke appearing upstairs, which the customer told me the chimney was just loose brick and all sorts and that's what that bit of brick was from. It was stuck in the pipe. Having a break from sweeping the chimneys today, I like to every now and then just spend a day repairing stoves. Because uh, you're gonna have too much of a good thing, and this breaks it up. change from the norm
Would you guys like to have a look up the chimney? See if we can see some daylight. I'll get you off your mount there. Spin you around. Ooh, I apologise. Uh, there's a baffle plate, sort of. Hang on, you can just see a bit of daylight right on top there. You see it? And that baffle. Sort of, oh, it's stuck, so I'm not going to. It's stuck in the open position, so we're going to leave that. It used to be a thing stove manufacturers used to do in the UK. Um, I think because some of the stoves, especially the old hunters, used to leak air in through all the vents and stuff. Um, putting the baffle in the flue way to reduce the draft was a way that they used to do it, but not so much these days. I don't think it's really it's not, not allowed, but I think it's frowned upon as a way to do the air control. Anyhow, I'm just rambling. Let's get back to the uh, stove parts. So, we've got the baffle. Wrapped in bubble wrap. I'm just going to unwrap it. So the old one, it was sort of a big piece of steel full of vermiculite bricks. This one is just a flat piece of steel. And well, I've been informed this is the upgrade. So that's fine. And it should just. Some writing on there. What does that say? No idea. Anyhow, it's going in. In. Corrosion on this back bar that we sit on. Um, so we may have to adjust the bricks to suit the stove if we can't get all the corrosion off, which is fine. It's a very soft material. It's easily worked. Now my last video was 50 minutes long, I hope that's fine <laughs> for you guys. Um, I was cleaning an old uh, uh, Nordica stove. I don't know if 50 minutes is too long, is it? Now he's having fun the whole time. There you go, see they've got some shapes on to help them fit. And it's in two pieces rather than just the one. Which is nice, which then leads me to believe I might be able to put the sides in first. Find out. Chamfers on the bottom as well, which is nice. Got my name on it, which is also nice. Yeah, here we are. 
And that box that came in was very handy. Put them there for a minute. Top bricks in, side brick. Now, how does that go? Hmm. All right. See that there, look. It's um. Fouls the oh, the back thing, and it's also up against this here. So there might be a bit of jiggling has to go on to get them in without removing that back piece. And you see the screws underneath. I'm not keen on removing those just to put a brick in. So just give me a second. some wiggly action here. That just needs a millimetre shaving off that corner. So I'm going to do that with my trusty tool. to change from how they came but if that's how they're going to go in without me having a world of pain you know, I'll just put a little chamfer on there and look, see what that does my knee pad's falling off put the knee pad back on better look after your knees kids oh look at that, see Oh, that's all it needed. That's all it needed. So I'm going to do the same on this one. I'm just going to put a chamfer on that corner. And that just gives me a bit of clearance getting it in. I've got the right corner, I have. Now I think these babies go like that. Ah, uh, no. Here we are. Let me just spin it round, actually. Uh -huh. There's rust and stuff, and this is a little bit bored. It's a bit higher in the middle than it is at the edge, I think. So. just stopping it going in so I'm just going to um, put a chamfer on this edge and maybe this edge and then we'll see how that goes only a small one because there'll be rust and stuff in all the corners
It's better, but not enough. Okay. Have another scrape along here just see if we can get that little bit out of that corner there. Mm -hmm. And find a tool that's tough enough. Where's my other glove? There it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just over that lip there's some corrosion rust. Okay, I think that one's okay. I'm gonna take this side brick out because I think it might be in the way. All right, let's try this one. Again, it's just fouling up there. What in a minute? Just 
took a bit longer than I expected. Just putting a few bricks in. Keep on just doing a bit until it goes in. Why aren't you going in though? Is that it? Okay, I think we're there. Put that back in. Wiggle, wiggle. Okay. Just have a quick tidy up over here because it's got a bit. Uh, I'll put you further back actually. Clip you on top of my Hoover. Nice.
bottom ones first. You can see, bottom. Bottom ones go on the bottom of, not the top of that bar, the bottom there, look. And the top ones have a different shape to them. You see it? Sit on top of the bottom bars, which makes sense. Like so. The top bar. Bottom bar. <laughs> that looks a lot nicer in there, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Last one sometimes can be awkward, but it's a lot. Not really. Yeah. We've run out of light. We've run out of light. Run out of light. Okay, we've finished. Let's come and have a look, shall we? Get over there. More lumens. New baffle. New bricks, clean bars. Just need to put the ash pan back in. And the chimney's clear as you saw. So we're going to move on to door seals, I think, because they're rubbish. <clears throat> so I'll probably do these outside. So let me get you uh, set up outside and then we'll. Uh, Start the video again, one minute. Here we go, we're in the back of the van. And I'm having trouble setting you up in a good spot. Well, there you go, the doors are here. And what I'm going to do is I'm definitely going to replace these glass seals because the it's uh, what they call ladder tape. I mean, I don't really think you need to use ladder tape on this glass. Just a single tape will do. I'll show you the difference. But first things first, we need to um, remove the glass. I have checked up front and the screws are loose, which is fantastic. Now this steel is ugly but functional, um, it, I might change it, I might not. Customers said change it so I might as well. And there's a little seal in there, 6mm, I think it is. So 
this isn't the original seal. Let's get the glass out. Huh? You see, it's um, got a ladder to it, which is like a ladder in the middle. You see that? And really, we just need sort of one side of that. So we'll get rid of that on the ground there. I'm going to clean the glass because the glass is it's not bad, but I'm going to give it a clean. And then I'm going to clean the soot out of these areas here because it's a bit sooty. And the quirk of these hunter stoves is they have a screw. I'm going to change that because that's horrible. They have a screw here which clamps down on the rope. And some people think this top one goes on the glass, but it does not. It goes on the rope. So I'm going to clean all that out. Rubbish. Yeah. So, brush all that off. With my trusty hand brush. better we like that I think I'm going to um, do the door seal part first that clips upside down someone's been here before and put that upside down see they're not flat Can you see it yeah it's not flat and it was the wrong way up, it needs to be that way up. Beautiful. So I'm just going to pop round to the side of the van, get some 14mm rope, I think.
And as you know by now, you've seen me do door seals before, we've got the glass tape, some good scissors, and I brought stove glass cleaner, doing the glass shortly. Right then, let's measure out some rope. So you see that clip there, that holds the rope down, doesn't hold the glass down, it holds the rope down. Does that make sense? That's the way that this company does it, and that's fine by me. So I'm going to do that, I'm going to put that under there, before I even start and pump it down. Oh. There you go, see? It's kind of good and rubbish at the same time. I don't know if I like it, but it works. Don't know. It looks ugly, I don't know. Anyway, here's what it is. So the tape that we use is just to stop the ends fraying, it is heat proof tape. I know it's very expensive for what it is. But it does its job and it does it well. So I need to just sort of guesstimate. Is that right? How much we need? I'm gonna go with that. Put it on, and if you trim it in the middle, you've got a non-free end on the end of your rope as well, as well as the rope for the door. Sweetness. So we're gonna run some sealant in there. I'm gonna use the black flexible stuff again. Which is uh, what I've grown to like. This stuff is. Oh God. Nozzles come off. Oh. <coughs> come on then. That's it. Play the game. Oh my God. Yeah, this, uh, this stuff. I quite like it. I think I'm going to switch to this on everything from now on. The other stuff goes powdery and then the rope falls out. And I get a lot of. You know, in like a year or two, when I go back to the stove, a bit of it's hanging off somewhere because it's gone powdery. This stuff doesn't do that. It's a lot to buy though, this isn't it? For You can buy small tubes of this for domestic use, if you want to do it yourself. round a lot of airplane activity today squish it into the uh, groove get into the groove here look Spin that round like so. Oh, 
That's one bit done. So what's next? I think I think I'm going to put a seal on here. Yes. I'll do that now. And you saw that's a replacement of the ladder tape that we did. This one is a bit narrower. I brought a 10 mil wide one, and this one's 8 mil wide, so this might do the job a little bit better. And it's self adhesive, well, it's adhesive backed rather. It's very handy, this stuff. So I'm just going to run it around the edge. I'm having a mistake putting gloves on for this. Oh well. And then just hold down the corners and tease it round. Got so many airplanes and aircraft around this way, usually military ones. Civilian. Oh, I think that's the air ambulance. Somewhere. That won't be bad. We may well be on the way to the hospital. Do you like that? I like that. And then the glass is shaped, got little cutouts everywhere, and it goes. Um, like that. So I want to clean it. <clears throat> That's why the gloves are on. It's like a foam. Yep. Mm. On both sides. Put that there for a minute. So again, get some. If you've got stubborn glass stains, use a, don't be afraid to use a scraper or a proper um, glass sort of abrasive pad. You do get some staining on these glasses that you can't get off really. What was that? Oh, this has got some 
you can't see it, but like it's got some crazing on it from the smoker's coal that's been used in it. So that fits on there, look at that. So that seal goes all the way around. We like that a lot. So where are the screws? I'm sure I've just done something there they are. So you see that one's not holding the glass down, it's holding the rope down. This one holds the glass down at the top. So before we tighten them up, let's get them all on. Nope, that's not right. We don't need to be like unbelievably tight, but they just need to hold the glass in place and you should not be able to just move them with your fingers. I'm happy with that. If you over tighten them, they sometimes can put weird pressure across the glass and it'll crack when it gets hot. So six mil in there. Isn't that right? White, I'm afraid. Let's see what I'll have to do. It won't be white for long. I'll take these gloves off. Let's, uh, I'm not having fun with those. Perfect. Bit of sealant. How does that look? That looks better, doesn't it? You see that? New door seal, uh, bottom seal here. New main seal, new glass seal. Not that way. Lovely. Glass is clean. So that's one door. I'm going to do the other door. I'm not going to video it because you've just seen one. I'm going to do exactly the same thing on that. And then we'll take it back inside, get the doors on, and then I'll either close this video out then I will move on to do the heat shield. I think we'll maybe do that separately because uh, it'll just be horrifically long. <clears throat> so anyway, let me get to this other door and uh, I'll take it back inside. Give me a second. Well, hello again. Right. So I've got the doors done. This is the one that we videoed doing and this is the one that I did without you. And you can see just there my thumb is you can see another seal which seals between the two doors because it's a double door so I need to drop them in place and using the pins 
Oops, the pins go in the hinge to hold it on. If you don't lose them all, all over. And of course, everything has to be super heavy and awkward. I'll bring you to have a look. Let's try and get you hooked up somewhere nice. Who's that? So we've got one pin partially in. Yeah, they're falling now, they just don't go in at all. Like that one not went in nicely. ones in and the top one I'll just carry on fighting with till it goes in there we go sometimes if the doors open it won't go close the door that usually helps and then the other door Straight in them ones. <gasps> so we've got um, new door seals, new glass seal, new seal that seals against this bar here. We just need to now <coughs> close the doors for the first time and see how that works. So that one seems to shut okay. This stove does wobble, I'm gonna have to sort that out. That's proper annoying. Okay, and then moving back out the way. Sorry for all the moving today. It's Closes. This one has a catch. It's got a circle missing. to adjust that because I do not like that it has a little notch that it catches in and it's not um, it's not plain ball so 
I need to undo. A fastener and nut, and it hooks into that, but it's, it's not very good. Let's see if we can improve it a little bit. I think it's been messed with in the past, and there is a little circlet missing, which stops all the handle in the correct position. Stops it sliding in and out like that. Right. And we can hold that. <coughs> Those. And we get that adjustable. And the nut. Hopefully it'll come undone. No. I think is the answer. Oh, oh, oh yes, hang on. Oh. So that handle should be in the down position. This should be in the down position, so they need to line up, and that needs to go in there and hook into that thing there. So we're going to wind it out a bit. Maybe one more, and then we're going to tighten up that lock. Should have brought some lube in. Can you see? Now we've shot. Got to be careful with these because they become brittle over use, and then if you force the threads too much, you'll easily snap it. I've done that before, thinking it was undoing. It snapped off and, and you stuck without a handle, which is no fun. So I think I've wound that out maybe a two or three mil millimeters. That is for everybody who doesn't do millimeters, I don't know what that is in inches, don't care, it's millimeters. Let's call it a couple of threads. Should we do that? A couple of threads. Is that the new universal standard? Let's do that. See how it catches much nicer, that's good isn't it? And the handle's in a, in a better position, it's not the best but it's better. Let's try with the other door, because obviously one door holds the other door closed. Yeah, 
There we go. Improvements all round, eh? Improvements all round. I just need to have a little check around. Make sure the door seals in the touching. Which they are. That's flush, that's flush, there's nothing twisting. Right. There is a tool somewhere. See that tool? Put that on, there you go. Like that, that's the idea. Beautiful. I'm just going to smoke test it. And then I'm going to do the heat shield, but I'm going to do a separate video because this video is horrifically long. I'll try and edit out any boring bits if there are any, which there won't be because look at that. That's off straight into there. And. Close it up. To stove so it doesn't shut completely down they do tend to leak a bit of air in here and there but that's pretty good and i'm not too fussed about a little bit of air leaking in and it stops you slumbering the stove as long as it's not excessive that's fine Well, there you go guys, um, I'm going to close this video out now. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know I did. It's good to see we've got some new parts in there and new door seals. It looks a lot better. I'm going to start out that wobble and then I'm going to get on with the heat shield, which will be for the next um, video. Uh, so I'll see you then. So have a great day and I will see you soon. Bye now.